Hi folks, welcome. It's Friday, 27th of October. And I'm kind of busy in here getting ready uh, for a workshop this weekend. Um, what I was wanting to do uh, was to just carry on with this uh, pot that you saw me make in the last but one clip. Since then I've also done another one. Uh, similar, uh, a little bit more round in the form, whereas this one's a little bit more masculine, a little bit more uh, like that. So yeah, I'm gonna put a I'm not going to be able to get to this one now, so I'm going to, besides, also, when you do this kind of thing, if you're going to, if you're going to start, if you're going to start attacking it or fluting it or carving it, you want to make sure it doesn't get too dry at the top, so you want to make sure you invert them. Um, I'm just going to put this one away right now. I'm just going to just spray the top of it because the top is a little is a little drier than the um, the base. Stick it in here. Yeah, nice sunny afternoon. I'll put that over here just for now. And um, I'm hoping that this one is going to be okay for me to to carve with the potato peeler. So let's do that. Um, oh yeah, just show you another one I did here. Um, this one I did um, already. I did it yesterday actually. I had a bit of difficulty actually because I carved it, I carved it like this way from the bottom going up to the top. And as I got up to the top here, it was getting drier. So the tool wanted to lift out of the clay and skate across the surface, if you see what I mean. So this one I think is a little more sort of equal in terms of uh, hardness from top to bottom. So let's, uh, let's just see what we're doing here with the camera. We've got to focus it down there. And um, maybe I'll just I'll drop it down a touch actually. Not quite so high. Okay. Let's see. See how that. I'm gonna sit here. Are we in the picture? I hold that roughly there, is that? Yeah, I think that's kind of it. Okay. Right. These can get pretty sharp, so just be careful with your fingers. Also, you don't want the surface here, this surface, to be too undulating. So when you pull down, see when you start a cut with this, you want to, you want to, you don't want to hesitate or stop. If possible, you want to just take it all the way. You see, just on the bottom here, where the bevel is, I'm just going to rub my thumb over that just for now. Probably have to go over that again a bit later. All right, so not doesn't have a trimmed foot. All right, we seem to be a bit in the sun and a bit in the shade here, which I don't like. Let me just see if I can dip it a bit more like that. Okay, Let's see what we can do. So I'm gonna I have to feel my way here a bit. 
because what can happen is you can start cutting and then suddenly the tool ooh, it, it lifts out of the clay and then you so I think what I'm going to do is sort of hold him a bit like that and I'm going to let's see Okay, first cut. I'll just show you that first cut. All right. The, these, they tend not to be a bit, uh, like if you're using a cheese cutter to do faceting, this is really faceting, you know? I like to sort of, between cuts, clean the, the, the tool. And that's where you have to be a bit careful you don't You see what happened there? It jumped. Um, let me just show you that there. You see, you see that how that had, had jumped there. Okay, now you might be tempted to think, oh dear, da, 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 da. No, that's no good sign. Hang on a minute. It sometimes it can be quite nice when it does it. So. Invariably, I tend to go back over these anyway, just to... It's always tempting, to, you see, to think, oh, we've got to make it look like a machine. It's got to look like it's machined, you know? Absolutely each cut the same. Do you, is that how you think? I don't think it has to be like that. I mean, I'm trying to get it uniform, but naturally it turns out that it isn't. Despite me trying to get it. You will always get you see a little bit of variation because every cut is slightly different, isn't it? <clears throat> now that was a cut without interruption. You see that? Also try to get the cuts straight. I'm kind of I'm kind of holding the pot you see here in my legs a little bit which is which is helping me actually <sighs> See sometimes when you do a pot you don't discover the method of doing it until you're halfway through the pot and then you sort of because it's working better for me now, holding it just like that in my legs, you see, lightly. Oh, yes! Oh. 
come round almost to the other side now. So, you've got to remember, you see, that little, what we tend to think of as being a technical flaw, because it hasn't, it hasn't, the tool has, basically the tool has, has sort of gone like this, you see, didn't cut straight. Uh, but those can be very nice little places where the glaze can can collect or can can create a nice effect you see okay now I'm looking at it and thinking really speaking I think I'm only going to be able to get one cut there so I'm using the side of the of the tool now just to Let's do this cut and see what we have left to deal with. I'll just hold it there. Yeah, I may just if I if I'm thinking it's the rippling the ripple there is is not what I want, I'll just get rid of it. Using the side the side of the tool just to I have to think to myself, because I was an engineer before I was a potter really, so it's very, it's very easy to sort of think that I'm working on the, the metal lathe and I've got to, I've got to turn out, you know, a, a screw thread that is absolutely perfect to the drawing, measures up exactly with a micrometer or the vernier caliper but of course we're not doing that are we you see what you, what you have to do is okay I'll give you the other side of the coin now in, in my thinking in my scheme of thinking, let's say. You see, when you're doing something and, you, and, and a mistake occurs, not or not your intended intention, not your first intention, say you get something else happening, and then you look at, you have to look at it and you have to analyze it, don't you? And then you have to think to yourself, is this, is this mistake, let's call it a mistake, Okay, let's call, let's say it's not not what was not my first intention, but let's call it therefore a mistake uh, that has occurred here. Is it adding something to the pot that I really like, or would I actually prefer that it it wasn't there? So sometimes you you just have to think like that a bit. I do. You 
it can be you see that something like that could could add a, a nice a nice something nice for the glaze but you have to you have to think about it I think and um, use your artistic sensibilities a bit and think well well actually if I'm truthful and honest with myself is it really adding something that is positive to the pot something good rather than just thinking oh look it's gone off oh well great it's different therefore it's good no, I don't think so necessarily just because it's maybe that's a difficult one isn't it for some time sometimes to think to um Sometimes when I've made a pot, something's happened to it which I like. But it's not always the case. Sometimes I wish that it hadn't happened. Uh, I suppose you one has to sort of um, now I'm going to just get my spatula knife for a second. Over uh, here. Yeah, somewhere well, uh, between... Good craftsmanship. You have a happy accident, let's see. And then you can exercise that right to decide to leave it or to scrub it out because you don't like it. And that's sort of down to the individual, isn't it? I think a little bit. So I'm using this little, little spatula knife just to compress the surface there where I'd gone over it just to because what, what I was doing before was kind of scraping it a bit and that makes the surface rough could take the glaze a bit different if it was like that Kind of burnishing it in a sense, I suppose. So, yeah, there's a little bit of a, a gouge there or something, so I'm just infilling it with a little piece of clay. And now using the knife blade here just to go over it. So, so all that remains uh, to do now is put a seal on it. Where's the seals? Well, the light is the light is going, isn't it? Da 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 dee dee. We'll put a seal there. Like that. And we'll put USA there just above it. Like that. And I pressed that in a bit harder than I meant to. Alright, let's uh, just show it to you quickly. Review it.
Oh, I think I'm. I think I'm quite happy with it. You know, I, uh, the form I like. Um, yeah, I don't know if adding facets makes it a little bit more masculine looking. Uh, no doubt you'll tell me. Anyway, there it is. So we'll put that one. Yeah, we've got a, a workshop tomorrow. Here, keep practicing workshop. So we're gonna have, I've got four people coming. And then next week, I hadn't realized that I did these workshops and I did them in the calendar. I didn't realize that uh, I had one the following week, straight after. Anyway, November 4th and 5th, I think it is. Yeah, two spaces on that one, free. So join us uh, if you care to, uh, we've got space. And uh, yeah, have a go at, uh, at, at, at this kind of faceting, perhaps with a potato peeler. You might have to experiment a little bit with the kind of potato peeler that uh, you like. But um, have a go at, at, at that. You don't really have to leave it really much thicker, I don't find. Um, yeah, they're kind of handsome pots. I, I, I like I like them. Yeah, okay, thanks folks. Go to my website, simonleachpottery.com and check out, I need to get some more pots up there. If you're interested in pots, I've got pots here, quite a few. Um, but I don't get them up there on on the on the uh, Etsy shop. Sometimes here are a couple of little pieces. I don't know if I show these these to you or not. Little honey pot, jam pot, mustard pot, and then this is a little a little um, a little caddy, small little caddy. Basically, just cylinders, aren't they? Yeah. Good folks. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'll see you in the next clip. Until then, have a good weekend and keep practicing. I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Dee, dee, dee.